Hi, but it's bro to see ya. Been missing you this long holiday. <laughs> no, I'm not Scottish. And I'm sure the Scots don't appreciate me doing that. I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot. And this is the new year. It's 2024, January 2nd, Tuesday. So what we do on this show, which I've been doing for years now, <laughs> literally, is look at hot OTC and penny stocks. These are stocks under five bucks that you can find on any market. And we're looking for those that have the potential to make us money. I like to find these hot stocks by looking at charts. I can see a lot of charts in a little bit of time and I can quickly analyze them. I can see by a glance if there's heat in the chart. You can see a big blue tsunami at the bottom. That's volume coming in. You can see a green hook cutting through a red line. That's a breakout. You can see a rocket, a big green line just going to the sky. Well, when I see a chart that has some sort of heat, then I'll take the time to go through all those press releases and filings looking for a catalyst. And it doesn't have to be fresh. Any catalyst in the last 30 days can get a hot chart moving. So when I find a catalyst to go with my hot chart, what do I got? I got myself a hot penny stock. And these are the stocks I like to share with you each day. Now, I've got three hot penny stocks for you today. I did find them all looking at the charts. And they all have one thing in common. They're all under a buck. So the first one we're going to take a look at, we've looked at a couple of times, a couple of weeks ago and a year ago. This is CEOS. No, not c -Cores. Their name now is Vetcom. Vetcom is a veterans education and benefits company focused on assisting the over 20 million United States veterans that qualify for underutilized annual benefits and owed compensation. As a result, Billions of dollars in veteran benefits go unclaimed every month in the United States. I love their business model. They're helping vets get what's owed to them. The people that put their lives on the line, serve their country, are being cheated by our government. And this company is helping them get what they deserve, anywhere from $1,000 to $3,000 a month for the rest of their lives. God, I love a company that has good fundamentals, but I love a company that has a good business model that actually helps people, helps Americans. So yeah, I'm kind of fond of this company's business model. Now they also sell products. They deal with botany and mycology, which are plants and mushrooms. I am familiar with the fact that they've got a coffee variety, mushroom coffee, I love my coffee, but I would have to have my arm twisted a little bit to try a mushroom coffee. But they say it's good for you. So that's the important part. So why are we looking at this stock again? Because it's hot. You don't have to find strange different stocks every day. If you've got one stock that just won't cool off, don't leave it alone. Stick with it. We saw this two weeks ago and she has been climbing since we looked at it. And I expect her to keep climbing. The chart looks really good. And as I said, she's doing something we can all appreciate. So CEOS finished the day at 0 0.032 with almost 9.5% gains. She's on the pink tier. She's current. She's got both of those green ticks we're always talking about. That's validated information, folks. When you're dealing with pinks, you get no validated information. Even the press releases can't be trusted. Your disclosures, they're just numbers being handed off to you. There is no validated information. We are literally taking the word of the management for everything. And I have learned the hard way, you can get taken by them often. And I've lost a lot of money believing what pinks tell us. So always do your due diligence and always make sure to see these green ticks if you're going to be holding that stock for a while. So I've already told you what this company does. What was their volume today? Aye, but it's taking a wee bit of drop here. <laughs> Going from about a million shares down to three quarter million shares today. Share structure for CEOS. Outstanding share count, 332 million. Insiders own more than half of the shares, 183 million, leaving us with 148 million in the float. Market cap for CEOS, 9.7 million. Financials, well, they just started making money at the end of last year. They did $19,000. That's not 19. We've got to add three zeros behind any of the numbers on any of these charts we're looking at. Jumping down to a quarterly, well, there you can see the growth. It's not huge. Percentage-wise, it is. It's over 100%. 
They went from 58,000 in June to 117,000 in September. That's over a hundred percent jump. Though they be small numbers, they are just starting and they are growing. That's all you can ask for. Balance sheet for the company. Cash and cash equivalents, money in the bank, about 93,000. Total assets, 1.9 million. Total liabilities, just about the same, which puts us at $14,000 deficit. It's not a lot, and I'm sure it's not gonna be there for very long. Looking at our disclosures, we don't have anything since 2019, and they are caught up with their financials. So let's just mosey on over to that news. So headlining some of the most current news here, Vetcom reports 101% increase in quarterly revenues. Vetcom was approved as a partner with the Department of Defense SkillBridge program. This is very unique. It's gonna help the vets, it's gonna help the military, it's gonna help the company. What this is, is when someone comes out of the military, the first thing they need to do for their transition to be smooth is find a job. So they can get a job and the government will pay the first six months to the employee that hires them. So these people can get a job now with this company, <laughs> right? A vet can get a company with Vetcom helping veterans get the benefits they deserve. Wouldn't that be great? That would be outstanding. And then their last piece of news, they got a new uh, chief marketing officer. He was the former executive vice president of Brew, Brew Triton Brands, Ernie Manasala. I'm sure I tore that name up. And lest I not mention it, Kate Monroe, she is the CEO of uh, Vetcom. We will be talking to her this Saturday. I should have the video out on Sunday. I am looking forward to this. I just discovered that Kate Monroe is running for Congress. I do believe it's the 49th uh, what, whatever district of California. Congratulations, Kate. So that's what's going on here, except for the fact that the chart just keeps climbing. And I don't blame it, and I like seeing it. Let's go take a look at it. We're now taking a look at Vetcom, ticker CEOS. We're going to chart it and all the other stocks in my free trading platform, Think or Swim. So we're looking at CEOS's one day, one year chart. His blue line reminds me of when we looked at it. We looked at it a year ago. We did look at it two weeks ago, but we looked at it back January 20th of 2023. It was roughly 2.5 cents when we looked at it. 10 days later, she was just under 10 cents. That was between four or 500% run right there. Then she came down, crashed through that 200, and she's been falling for a while, hitting a low here in October of 0077. Now we've got a real strong resistance right here. Where she broke out, it's just coincidental. You can see we covered the tops of a lot of prices here. And that puts us at uh, 4.3 cents. Now our price currently is 3.2 cents. She is just about ready to fill this gap, folks. We had a big drop here. She dribbled down to the slow. She's curved around and she has almost filled this entire gap, which is up there at 3.6 cents and we are at 3.2 cents. This is the yearly chart and we have an atypical breakout going on. She bounced off of that low, crossed all of her SMAs, got stuck here on a light resistance. Once she got through that, she had a lot of pent up pressure busted through two resistances and the 200 with extra spike left over. Pushed that wick way up high, came down no lower than where she started from and just continued climbing. And she has crossed the 200 just now. All of our SMAs on the one-year chart look great and all of our osculators are going to the moon. She is a hot one-year chart. Looking at our six-month, four-hour view. So our high on a six month chart is about 4.6 cents. We hit that in July. We had this drop and I'm not quite sure why this happened. This was on August 18th. She fell from uh, just around four cents down to a penny and a half. It was a huge drop and it wasn't even done. Fell all the way down here to this double zero, double seven. And off of this, you can see everything is turned around. Every single SMA right now is crossing that 200. 
she has jumped onto her nine day escalator, crossed that 200 without any problem, going through every single resistance without even slowing down. We had a little bit of slowing down here, just crossed it and she's walking right now. Huge, big bars. Everything looks sweet. The volume is getting less since she broke through that 200, but her price is still climbing. All of our oscillators, they're all still climbing too. Every single one of them looks great. Coming down to that one hour, 20 day view. So here's our low, uh, just over a penny and under the 200. Once she got over that 200, she hit this resistance here and just kept beating her head on that for days, going sideways. Once she broke out, she broke out hard pushed way up here, came back down to her 20, which is what she's been sitting on once she got over that 200, climbing on that 20 all the way up. Then she fell hard here. It looks like a Superman jump, came down onto the pavement and pushed so hard to jump off, bent all the pavement and put herself up there, hitting that new high of 0 0.0336. And she is hanging out up there right now. All the SMAs look great. Volume is light, but it isn't slowing the, pl the price climb. Osculators, they actually look good. Our PPO, our percentage price osculator, very much like your MACD, but the MACD uses the full price, the percentage price osculator, you're getting ahead of me. Yes, it uses a percentage of the price. Well, here underneath it, this is my ADX. I like to think of it as my trend continuation. It's just based on straight lines. It doesn't matter if they're going up sideways or down, just a straight line. If your line changes, it means your trend on your chart has changed. Well, as you can see here, she's been climbing with these little itty bitty dips. So it should be one line with these little itty bitty dips. And that's what we got. And as long as this continues falling and my PPO continues climbing and you have this fish mouth opening up, getting bigger and bigger, guaranteed your price is climbing. This is a pattern I look for on my osculators. That's why I put my ADX underneath my PPO so I can see it. And just food for thought, it also works exactly the opposite. If the blue line and the red line are coming together, your price is falling, guaranteed. Coming on down to that five day, five minute. Well, that's not a bad chart, but it's a very interesting chart. She's bouncing hard. We got a lot of good bounces here. She came underneath the 200, bounced off of that, and started climbing slowly. Another big bounce off of the 200 and then she just machine gunned it here. Boom, boom, boom. Really starting to push it down. You can see she was climbing and she is rolling around right here. Looks like she was gonna start to fall. And then she changed her mind. She did a big jump and just started pushing, pushing, pushing that price, which that price has a little string attached to every single SMA. The higher the price gets, the more it tugs on that SMA until it turns up. And that's what just happened. She saved herself. Our SMA on our 200 is now coming up with everything else. Our oscillators, they're very strong, but they have had a wee bit of pullback because of that one bar at the end of the day. Outside of that, I like CEOS. I like the chart. You can't deny that both the one year chart is definitely a solid breakout chart. That is brilliant. And your four hour chart, wow folks, come on. She's turning into a rocket stock. This is picture perfect. Come on, put it on your watch list, CEOS, and then put me on your calendar because I'm gonna be doing an interview with Kate Monroe on Saturday and I will have that out on Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Our next stock, it is a hot penny stock by all means. It ticks every box. We've got ourselves a hot chart, strong volume, a low float, big news. And on top of that, insider buys. You can't ask for anything more with the hot penny stock. So let me introduce you to Roy. This is Risk On International, ticker ROI. Now Roy does have a hot chart. It's in the midst of a breakout right now. She finished the day almost at 46 cents and she had about 38% gains today. Now, Roy, she's on the major exchanges and these penny stocks on the major exchanges come with benefits. First off, there's no transaction fees, unlike the OTC. Second of all, you can trade at pre-market, aftermarket. You can't do that with OTC stocks ever. And there's a lot more volume and a lot more money up on the major exchanges. Personally, I like trading the major exchange penny stocks. 
So what does Risk On International do? Well, they've got a description here, but it's not exactly right. So as my habit is, I just jumped into the most recent press release to get the description. Founded in 2011, the company owns 100% of Bitnow.com, including Bitnow.com Metaverse Platform, which allows users to engage with a new social networking community and purchase both digital and physical products while playing 3D immersive games. Riskon recently formed Guy Care to open specialized men's healthcare clinics. In addition, the company also owns approximately 66% of Wolf Energy Services. They're on the OTCQB, ticker WOEN, and approximately 70% of White River Energy Corporation, ticker WTRV. So they've got more going for them than just what we see here. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Boom! Like I said, strong volume. We got over 800% increase in our volume today, jumping from 8.8 .8 million to over 67 million. Share structure for the company, we've got ourselves a low float. Outstanding share count is only 2.3 million. Honestly, I don't know what the float is, but I do know it's never over the outstanding share count. So there's no way our float is any higher than 2.3. That makes it an absolutely low float. Market cap for the company, that too is very low. We're at $784,000. Financials for Roy. Egads, that is not looking good. It has been falling drastically over the last four years. Going from a half a million up to 15 million and then having to give away 14.7 million of that. There's got to be a story there. 2022, they were down to $27,000. And by March of 2023, they had no revenues at all. Hopefully the quarterlies are better. One of them is the one that came out in June. They finally put some money on the books, $45,000. Problem is it cost them $86,000 to make $45,000. That means they were in deficit of $41,000 just that quarter. Looking at the balance sheet for the company. They got a little bit of money in the bank, about $2,000. Total assets, we've got $22.5 million. Total liabilities, about $23.5 million, which leaves us deficit of about $700,000. Looking at the disclosures, we got lots of Form 4s, and they can be good news. Form 4s are filed whenever the insiders acquire or dispose of the company's stock. And they can do that in a lot of different ways. But we are primarily interested when they buy them or sell them. Well, most of these are purchases, but not of any consequence. Most of them are just 1,000 or 1,500 shares. This one here is a little bit bigger. Now, what caught my attention was normally there's a person's name up here, the CEO or director, the treasurer. This is the company itself. The company is making these purchases. Now, they made two purchases, and we know their purchases because of the code. There's a P. If they sold them, there's an S. You see any other letter, they did not buy them or sell them. So we've got two purchases here, one on the 8th and one on the 11th of December. One was for just 1,000 shares, and the other one was for 103,000 shares. There is one other filing we have to take concern with, this 8K here. The NASDAQ reached out to them and told them that their not their market cap, their stockholder equity. I keep thinking it's the market cap. Stockholder equity is too low. And if they don't get it fixed, they're going down to the OTC. But they have news with regard to this. So we're going to look at it from that point of view. So let's take a look at that news. So I've got just a few pieces of news here that caught my attention. I want to share with you. Back here in November, Risk On International announces Guy Care to open men's health clinics across the United States. These sound like brick and mortar businesses to me. I have not dove into that. I don't know exactly what it says. We are gonna take a look at this one because it's important. Risk On International confirms it has appealed NASDAQ delisting letter. That 8K was telling them they were going down to the OTC. We will look at this one. Then we've got two pieces of news here talking about a deal. And it's tricky the way they're doing it. And this happens tomorrow, folks, which is why we're looking at it now. Alt Alliance, which owns the subsidiary, Risk On International, 
announces its new generative AI platform and technology partner on January 3rd. So we've got a tease here. They've got a new AI platform and a new partner they're going to be working with. So let's take a look at these two pieces of news. First one, they're not getting kicked off. They tell us here that the company announced it has filed an appeal to the delisting letter received on December 1st, 2023 from NASDAQ. As previously reported on July 18th of this year, the staff notified the company that it did not satisfy the continued listing requirement under the NASDAQ listing rule, which requires that the listed company's stockholder equity cannot be anything less than $2.5 million. And right now we are at $700,000 down, which means that they are $3.2 million away from where they need to be. On December 8th, the company requested a hearing before the NASDAQ to appeal the determination by the staff. The hearing has been scheduled for February 29th, 2024, and this comes with a magic bullet. The hearing request stays the suspension of the company's common stock until that date, February 29th. So we're safe. Nothing is going to happen to the company, even if they don't fix anything. We're not going to go down to the OTC. Now, you got to watch that date, February 29th. If they haven't got their, their shareholder equity up, they could easily be down at the OTC. And that other piece of news, the T's. This came out on the 28th. Alt Alliance, which is the holding company of Risk on International, expects to announce on January 3rd via a press release and various media outlets its new generative artificial intelligence platform, as well as unveil a relationship with its principal technology partner. This partnership represents a strategic collaboration with a technology partner, which has invested more than five years of research and development into their AI platform. So they've got a deal on the table. They got AI coming into the picture. The biggest problem is that shareholder equity, but that's off till February 29th. And as day traders with this information, with news coming out tomorrow, we're not worried about that. So let's go take a look at this chart. See if there's any room for gains for us tomorrow. Oh, we got lots of room on this chart for gains. She's got a real high ceiling. This is Roy, ticker ROI, Risk On International. And we are looking at a six month, four hour view. We got our high bubble and our low bubble in the same month, May. She was down here at four cents, jumped all the way up here to a dollar. That looks suspiciously like a reverse split to me, a one in 25, but I don't know if it is or not. She came back down to her nine day and then jumped to that high of $2.38. Fell down and she's been working her way all the way down to this low of about 14 cents down here, but she's had some huge bounces on her way down. This one here is like 130%. That's 100, that's 80. Well, I seen a trend here, so I drew a trend line across the top, waiting for her to break that trend. Well, that's what she's doing. But she's not just breaking the trend line, she's also breaking the 200. Now we got three strong resistances in this zone, a real strong one up here. You can see all the weight sitting on top of it. That is at about 60 cents. She crushed that one today, fell back right up underneath this one, which is at 47 cents. And then we've got the breakout one, the one she had to get over before she was gonna break out, that was at 34 cents. So she has been falling and she has just curved around right here so nicely, bringing every SMA with her. Look, all of them are evenly spaced, now starting to climb, getting ready to cross that 200. Our nine days are already over it and our price has been bouncing on that nine day SMA. She did have a pullback today hard, but she has bounced up right into the center of that bar, which looks really good to me. Volume was stronger today than most of the days before it and our oscillators are all showing good strength. We've had climb on our PPO for three days, just like our MACD. Our RSI is at 62. Everything looks nice. Looking at our 20 day, one hour view, we've had a change of trend. Here's our 200 falling right here in the zone where it got flat. We had a lot of excited activity, right? Boing, boing, boing all over the place. And once it started to curve up, she says, I'm climbing. 
She took off. She came down, landed on her 50, and she's got these huge bounces right now. She's coming down. She's coming to the 20 and the 50. We could see another big bounce right here. Oscillators, they are a bit cool. We had most of that rise at the pre-market. She went from 32 cents to over 74 cents. You're looking at well over 100% gains pre-market before she fell down to 39 cents, bounced up on top of her nine, which is where she's sitting right now. Oscillators are a bit weak on our hourly chart. Looking at the five day, five minute. So we got a low back here of 13 cents. I thought it was 14, I was close. <laughs> Underneath the 200, slowly she worked her way to that 200 as the 200 worked its way to her. She got up on top of it, a little bit of excitement, and then she launched. Came down underneath the 200, and we've got another launch. And now look, look how she's laying on that 200 perfectly. And here comes our SMAs turning up underneath the 200 to get ready to cross it. This looks like it's about ready to rip, folks. It honestly does. I'd be putting ROI on my watch list, folks. The chart is hot. They've got tomorrow's announcement coming out. You got to watch it early. First thing you got to watch isn't the chart. You've got to be watching the news. Make sure to keep your eyes on the news. If you see ROI come out with a name you recognize and a volume comes on the scene, you're going to want to get into this. ROI for the rip. I got no doubt in my mind you're familiar with this company. This is ticker DFLI, Dragonfly Energy Holdings. I like this company. I've talked to you about it three times already this year. Last time, I think, was in June. The company's got a decent share structure. They got positive shareholder equity. They got a solid business model. But none of those are the reasons we're looking at it. We're looking at it because she's got a hot chart. This thing has been in a tailspin for a while. Hit the floor and has just been going sideways, bouncing off of it for a while. And now she is set up for a breakout. An atypical chart. It looks sweet, folks. Deathfly finished today just under 60 cents and just about 9.5% gains. She too is on the NASDAQ, so you're going to get those benefits like you do with all penny stocks on the major exchanges. So what does Deathfly do? Well, for those of you that don't know... Dragonfly Energy Corporation is a leading manufacturer of deep cycle lithium ion batteries and is now expanding into yet another industry to provide solar energy storage for industrial remote applications. We're going to get more information about that. It is also partnering with companies like Amerisco and Conexa in its foray into this new market. And they got lots of deals with companies you're familiar with. The company is best known for its patented battery technology called Battle Born Batteries and products in the United States. Dragonfly Energy is driving research and development initiatives for its non-toxic deep cycle lithium iron phosphate batteries. Their batteries are replacing lead acid batteries across a wide range of markets, including RVs, marine vessels, residential off-grid and backup storage, and industrial applications. The company has also been successfully in patenting a wide range of its technology. Thus far, Dragonfly Energy has over 85 patents filed and pending based on battery pack design, cell manufacturer, and battery communication technology, and more. <laughs> so now you got an idea of what they do. So what was the relative volume around the company today? There you go, she's jumping. We got more than 100% increase going from 513,000 shares to 1.2 million. Share structure, outstanding share count is just under 60 million. I don't know what the flow it is, but I know it's not gonna be higher than 59.5 million shares, which isn't a bad float. It's not a low float, but it is a real decent float. Market cap for the company, 32.2 million. Financials for DefFly. At the end of 2022, they had $86 million and they got to keep 24,000 of that. Quarterly reports, they've been falling. Five quarters ago, they were at 26 million, fell to 20, 18, jumped back to 19, and have now fallen down to 15.8, which I do find surprising, honestly. They are still bringing home profits and they brought more 
with only $16 million and they brought in with $20 million. They got 4.5 compared to just four. Looking at the balance sheet, well, they got lots of money in the bank, don't they? $13.2 million. Assets, $82 million. Total liabilities, only $58 million. As I said, they've got positive stockholder equity of $24 million. Looking at the disclosures. Well, we do have a few 8Ks over here, and I've already gone through these. Two of them we have to be concerned with. One is a notification by the NASDAQ that they have been under a dollar for too long. NASDAQ has a minimum bid price requirement. You go under a dollar for too long, they'll just yank you off the major exchange and throw you down to the OTC. But this is just a tap on the shoulder. It's just a warning, no deadlines, no threats, just, hey, we're aware of it, take care of it. The other 8K, this gives us a little bit of information. They tell us here, in connection with an article published by the Wall Street Journal on December 19th, Dragonfly Energy Holdings has reported that it expects to report cash and cash equivalents of approximately $12 million as of December 31st, without taking into account the company's existing $150 million equity line of credit. So it sounds like their revenues are falling more, but they've got a lot of money there backing them up. So they really haven't got any problems, but we hate to see those revenues fall. All right, and taking a look at the news. Now, every time I come over here, there's, <laughs> of course, I have not been able to get this up. I am all prepared over here at my backup site, Insider Tracking. This is a Canadian site, but they do bring in all sorts of American news and information. And I've got some news here I want to share with you. Uh, the most current piece of news is December 28th. I've gone back here, not too far, October 19th. They tell us here that Dragonfly Energy is to provide the lithium power upgrade to Coachman RVs. Coachman, you've heard of them. How about Streamline? Those aluminum ones that are real smooth, they got them too. How about Thor? Yes, they got Thor. They are getting all of these RV companies. They got boat companies. They're making power banks for residential homes. They're working with solar companies. December 6th, Dragonfly Energy partners with Amerisco. December 18th, the company partners with Conexa. I've always said, if you have a company that hasn't got any partnerships, any joint ventures, nobody wants to work with them, that's a bad sign. This company's got all sorts of deals. It looks great to me. And the most current piece of news that came out December 28th, Dragonfly Energy is expanding into remote industrial applications with its patented and trusted products. And I'll just read what they've got here because they did such a fine job with it. If you've ever been driving across the country, you may have come across some remote industrial applications, like those little gray boxes with a panel on the side of the freeway. These remote industrial applications are often crucial to safety as they can be instrumental for street lights, remote charging applications, or phones for emergencies. For remote locations, it's essential that these devices are self-sustaining. And that's why there's not enough of them out there. They gotta dig trenches and put electricity to that one spot. It's just not worth it to them. But if you have battery power, if you have solar power, you can have these in a lot more places, which is going to make it a lot safer for us. And it's going to give them a heck of a lot more business. There's a lot of highways in this country. So there's nothing current going on except the chart is breaking out right now. Is that current enough for you? <laughs> Let's go take a look at it. You may not be able to see the details, but you can see that red hot line sitting on top of that price. It is a hot chart. This is DefFly, ticker DFLI, Dragonfly Energy, and we are looking at a six month, four hour view. We got a high back in April of $9.82. This is just a quick wick though. She went up and came down real fast. Before she started wicking, she was at a high here of about $6. She came down underneath that 200, landed here on a strong support at $1.40. She laid there for quite a while, took a bounce over the 200, and then fell on it again. Stayed there for like almost two months. And here, halfway through October, she broke it, coming down. 
She fell down to this low of 50 cents, and off of that, she just went sideways. She is just hovering over top of this 200-day haul. We talk a lot about this because penny stocks seem to like it. 200-day haul is a lot like your 200-day SMA, except it puts more credence on current prices, so you end up with a different long-term line. Well, she was hovering across this for quite a while, and right now she looks like she is ready to break out. Our 200-day SMA was coming down at a strong incline, and now it's starting to turn around and just starting to level off. This is when you get an opportunity. Now, what I would have liked to have seen here is a directional intentional spike. That's one of those big green spikes that comes from the bottom up to the 200 and then puts a big old long wick over the 200 and then falls back down no lower than where it started from. That tells me she's ready to break out. Well, she looks like she's ready to break out and I'll tell you what I'm thinking. I think the directional intentional spike, that big bounce is going to come maybe tomorrow or the next day. I'm thinking tomorrow. And when she takes that big bounce, she's going to come back down and hit on the 200 before she takes off again. You may want to take those gains, let her come down, and then get back in. Our volume is pretty strong today, and it has been growing over the last week. All of our oscillators, they are in takeoff mode. Look at that. Our PPO is just about ready to do a crossover, just like our MACD. And our RSI, well, that's a bit cool. That's down there at 52. I don't like to see it any less than 55. Taking a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. So she's kind of everywhere here, and she's not getting anywhere. You can see with the line on the board here, she has just gone straight across the hard way, all over. What looks good is right here. Once she got over the 200, she hit it over and over again here, making sure it was solid. Then she did a big bounce, got to this high. Then she fell fast and furious and did a rubber ball bounce. Rubber ball is air in it. It goes under the water. The first thing it wants to do is come up out of that water, and it normally shoots out of the water and then falls back to the surface. And that's exactly what happened here. She came back down to the surface, and she's actually bounced off of that nine-day SMA, crossing all of the SMAs, and it looks like she's trying to climb. And look at our oscillators. What do you see there? Our pattern, right? The PPO and the ADX are spreading that fish mouth. That is a guarantee the price is climbing. We've got our MACD crossing the signal line and our RSI has finally made 55. Looking at our five day, five minute. Goodness, she's everywhere. Let's put that straight line up there. She's not getting far, but she's made some headway. She was going across the board, bouncing off of the 200, broke that 200, falling down to this low of 53 cents yesterday, jumping this morning up to 61, and then pushing that all the way up to 63 and a half cents before she fell back. Didn't exactly hit the 200, did she? But she's bouncing anyways. And right now, whew, she's going sideways, folks. Tough to tell what's going on here. But I like Def Fly. I think Def Fly's got a lot going on. And looking at this chart right here, folks, that tells me she is ready to break out. I honestly think the breakout is to come in a couple days. I think tomorrow we should look for that directional intentional spike. A big jump through the 200 up, and then it's going to come down fast. So when you see it move real quick and start taking some gains, you may want to sell as she's climbing. You see it at 80%. You go and sell it, by the time you hit your button, you're at 92% because it was climbing as you were doing your stuff. But if she hits the high and starts coming down and you start putting in your sell order, you see it at 90% by the time you get your order and it could be at 70, 60, 50 because it starts falling fast, right? So sell on the way up, let it fall, come back down, hit that 20 and bounce and catch it again. And I think that will be the run. DFLI. I still like this company, and I, I was going to say I covered it four times this year. I didn't. This is the first time this year. So I've given you three stocks, folks. I like all of these. I think they've got great charts, but they do need some more due diligence. So go on out there. Don't cheat yourself. It's your money you're investing, not mine. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.